Hello everyone, I'm back shooting a quick video today about how I set up my grossing bay. What's the best things that I like about what I have and you know maybe some ways that you can improve your grossing bay setup. So what I really want to do is a two video series. First one is just how I set up my bay, what I have, what I like, what I don't like, why I like it, and these kind of things. Maybe give some other people some ideas. And the other part I want to do is grossing for comfort and safety. So this video I'm basically just going to talk about the equipment that I use for grossing. And then we'll get into things that are good for comfort, safety, how to set up a bay so that you can not get injured, not hurt yourself, and, um, and those kind of things. So for starters, we're going to talk about grossing bays. So what I'm using is a thermoscientific gross lab senior it comes with a sink a rinse a vent hood that I've got turned off now because I don't really need it because I'm not doing anything um, it has a little magnet strip in the back but mainly it's just a well lit stainless steel grossing bay that has elevation features okay that's important particularly when you're tall or short and um, that way you can actually customize the grossing bay to the proper height. So I'm just going to do a quick little walkthrough of what I have. Obviously um, sink, it has uh, hot and cold, it's uh, sensor controlled, but you still have to use the knobs. I've worked at some places that had a, had a foot pedal, which would be nice. Obviously I don't have that here, um, but this is still good. It has a little spray thing so I can hose some things down, mainly to clean out the sink so I don't have um, this stuff sitting on the side. Um, got napkins, got sponges, got vinegar spray. I'll talk about that little box later. Um, these are the racks that I put my blocks in. This is detergent cleaner. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, some powder for helping get sticky hands and gloves. Staple and staples for closing large bags. These are called wipe balls. I'll take a picture of the label for those. Those are little absorbent pads. Extra blades, inks, a cube of formalin for topping off small stuff, 4x4s, Q-tips, blades, biopsy bags. This is a little eyedropper that I actually converted for uh, hematoxylin, so I like to ink my real small biopsies so they won't get lost. And the magnet um, storage thing. So, And I like to do this with my blades so that um, they're up out of the way, they're open, I can access more of them if I need, but they're not gonna stab anybody and I've got just some notes that I've taped up there for things to remember and that kind of thing also here is a wireless mouse here in the middle um, I'll talk about the, what, what I'm using for that later um, and so this cutting board is actually a um, one from market lab sorry about that and um, so I like getting it up that way my I'm not down into the, the lip of the grossing bay. I can actually um, just rest my hands up there. Plus, I also like being able to store things underneath. So what I have is my, my, my long blades underneath there, and they're not in my way. So that's basically how I do that. Um, my monitor setup is I have one that's in landscape and one that's in uh, portrait positions. Um, this is probably just very unique to me so I use um, soft path and um, and I have to use my block things over here my dictations over here I'm using dragon so I have a wireless um, headset receiver there and my wireless headsets sitting over there uh, this mouse also works as well as the the wireless mouse so the, you know they work together so they can both be plugged in and wherever I am if I'm over at the PC that mouse will work and I can click 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 and type 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 and then if I'm over here grossing with my dirty hands I can just use this mouse and um, and do what I need to do on the computer um, and I just have an old magazine sitting underneath for a mouse pad because this thing will get dirty and I'll just throw it out and put a new magazine underneath so I'll be in trouble when they stop making magazines pretty soon so 
Let me just talk about what I have down here. These are just these orange absorbent pads on one side that have a plastic water barrier on the back. Um, these are good because they don't get your, your, your cutting board dirty, but um, if you have something large and very messy, you can just roll it up, throw it in the trash, and move on. These are um, called the Former Guard Plus Absorbent Neutralizing Pads, okay? This is, they're, they're, they're kind of expensive, but these are pads that are filled with a neutralizing chemical, so when formalin hits it, it doesn't just like sit there and you're breathing in these fumes. The formalin that, that, that goes into this pad is neutralized, basically turning it to water, and um, so you're not sitting there breathing fumes. Again, very expensive and all that. Um, and then what I have, mainly what I work on most of the time are just these little white balls. They're little white, absorbent, soft pads. They, they hold up my blades well. Um, every time this gets soiled, um, you know, any decent sized specimen, I'll basically just wrap the specimen up in this, shove this in the specimen container, and that will be my, um, it just, just goes away. And then I just pull down a new one. This helps with uh, cross-contamination. This helps with keeping my bay clean, keeping everything clean. And so that's my basic setup. In the sink, I have um, a bucket of soapy water with that detergent in it and an old toothbrush that I repurposed for cleaning out mainly these grooves, okay? These grooves that are on your forceps. Watch out for stuff that's trapped in there. Use the toothbrush to kind of get that out because you could get some cross-contamination very easily with that. And then this, this other bucket is just where I pour my uh, excess formalin and then I can recycle it or neutralize it. That way formalin's not going down the sink. As far as the tools I use, they're pretty basic. Um, these scissors that have the rounded on one side, they're good for opening bowel, um, introtome kind of style blades. They're disposable uh, blades, so they stay sharp. No need to have them sharpened. Um, they're, they're, yeah, they, they work pretty well. Um, obviously, uh, just a regular um, scalpel. This is a uh, number eight. Um, it works with uh, number 60 blades, which I prefer. Um, the 60 blades, these are, you know, non-sterile surgical uh, 60 blades. I prefer the 60s over the 20s because most of the stuff I'm doing is, is a little bit larger. I have a fine pair of forceps that are a little bit longer for getting in other things mainly and then there's just a regular pair of forceps that, you know, for that. Um, this is a newcomer supply ruler. I like this because it doesn't even have inches anywhere on it. It's just centimeters everywhere you turn so it doesn't matter how you hold it. It's, it's good. I like that. The other ones have you know, centimeters on one side and, and, and inches on the other. And so I just like this one, that way everything's always um, together. Um, other thing I have is, uh, you know, just went down to uh, a sporting goods store and got an old um, little tackle box, um, plastic tackle box. And in here, I have these little pl paper tabs that I use for communicating with uh, histology. This one's on edge, I have an on end, and I have an ink down on this side, and then on the other side I have uh, vas deferens, basically because we let the histotext cut the vas deferens at the embedding station, and then I have some special instructions like H&E 1 and 6, 4 unstained, and then H&E uh, 1 and 10, um, uns and, and the rest unstained tabs, just to kind of help communicate with histology, but this keeps them all organized, that way when I need them I just reach over and I grab which ones I want and they don't spill all over the place, which tends to happen. Um, I have a little squirter bottle here with vinegar for fixing my inks. Obviously paper towel holder. This wireless mouse, again we talked about. Right now, as far as this grossing base setup, I just wanted to um, get back into shooting some more videos. But what I do want to talk about is if anybody has any ideas for specimens that they want me to show them grossing, please just add that to the comment section and I'll be glad to uh, accommodate if I can. Again, I don't get a ton of different types of specimens here that everyone outside gets, but if I do get one, I will uh, do my best to uh, shoot a video of it. Oh, and also, this is a Pathco blade, is what they used to call these things, um, mainly because they're made by Pathco. It's a um, little 
holder that you put one of these double-sided um, razor blades in and it's really cool it's a little bit bigger so you can see it compared to the other things but um, what I like about it is you have two blades you have blade on both sides they can be dangerous because there's blade on both sides um, but uh, blade typically holds up pretty well and it's easy to change out only uh, thing I don't like about these things is they're difficult to clean so this thing comes out of the middle and um, you gotta kinda rinse it out and all that kind of stuff because uh, junk gets into the tube but um, I use that on occasions for having another blade at the bay but you know also I use these um, blades um, blade holders so this one is just the standard one you can kind of see it has the you know the shorter size blade and and this one is made by Advantech you can see it has the offset so your handles a little bit raised versus uh, the, the original and this is good for when you're cutting and let me get position so when you're cutting that way when you go to the blade can be completely down and my hand is not touching the board or it's very close to the board but it's, I can make a full cut and not do that but with this blade you can see when when I go to put it down I can't put it all the way down because my hand is hitting the board so anyway these are pretty cool again I'm not paid by Vontech or anything like that but those are those things I'm going to put some links in the description after this video and um, any of the any of the stuff you want to um, look into for your grossing station um, you can have uh, information for that so obviously you need to have a scale ready available at your workstation so I have it over here on this little table this is a real nice scale it doesn't time out um, easy to tear obviously really w works well uh, sharps container is very big so it's easy to kind of throw blades and keep moving um, keep some bleach and some det detergent um, a waste container very close to the grossing bay is always a good idea you know, that way you're not minimizing your drippage of stuff um, this is just where I put my empty completed um, containers and uh, this is the specimen cart that will have um, specimens on it and the clipboard would have a tech sheet or a grossing sheet or whatever you guys call it at your place and then obviously I put this little cup over here on the side of the cart so my pins stay there so I can fill out the tech sheet whenever it's done and so basically that's my grossing station the inks I'm using are cancer diagnostic um, that's just the brand this place used uh, D Davidson marking guys are good and also stat lab I've used them before they're, they're pretty good um, and that's my grossing bay uh, I use the standard biopsy bags <coughs> for the, the biopsies and then I have um, we do whole mount prostates here and so I use the uh, the bigger blue bags for the whole mount prostates and that's what the stapler is for is for securing those bags closed after I've put in the specimen hope everyone enjoyed it if you have any questions please ask um, again I'm going to try and do another video shortly for um, ways to make your grossing bay more comfortable and things you can do to um, make it easier on your body for standing at long periods of time for grossing <laughs>